My name is Jay Sable and I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit. We're a highest good for all organization and our philosophy is creating better. We're here to help others create better too. The way that we're doing that is through open source and free shared tools, tutorials, resources, blueprints, and do-it-yourself instructions for highest good approaches to food, energy, housing, education, for-profit and non-profit business creation, society, and true earth stewardship. Creating all of these things so that they can be duplicated and implemented either as individual components or as complete self-sufficient, self-sustainable, and self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built around the world. Solution models that create additional solution creating models, helping to spread this idea and positively and permanently transform the world for everybody. If what we're creating is exciting to you, we invite you to join what it is that we're doing. And if you'd like more details on everything that I'm talking about, please visit our website. And for updates, specific updates, like the one I'm about to talk about right now, start with our blog. This is our weekly update number 46. And I'll be discussing everything that our team has accomplished for the week of January 6th, 2014. Highest good education, open source, free shared, globally accessible, globally collaborative, cooperative education designed for all ages, modifiable for any environment, created so that it can be used in a home environment, so it can be used in a private schooling environment, so it can be used in a traditional schooling environment, so it can be used for a community uh, schooling environment, or it could just be used to enrich any educational program. In this last week, uh, we finished the social sciences molecule image research, so which is the complete subject of social sciences. We've researched hundreds and hundreds of images, uh, and we're going to be putting that together to cover the complete social sciences to look like this, like the math molecule, which is already done, and then with descriptions of each one of these images so that you can look at the whole subject and know exactly what it encompasses and then be able to move in a nonlinear path through that based on a child's individual preferences, strengths, and areas where they want to improve. And so now that we're done with that, we are also uh, now work, we've already begun work on the values um, image research and we're 10% done with that as well, looking at the different values, human values, and creating a similar molecule to that. Also in education, we finished the relative space lesson plan, which is our second completed lesson plan. We have another 30 that have been outlined. If anybody would like to help create something like this and would like to be a part of, of doing the image research and creating this magic and brainstorming and all the details on how to teach every subject within the context of a central theme, and in this case it's relative space, uh, relative and dimensional space, um, to all ages. If you'd like to be a part of that, check it out. If you want to see the complete details, go to the webpage on this and take a look at this lesson plan. It's something that if you have kids, you can use right now to stimulate ideas and to bring a level of relevance to any subject and any kid's life studying that subject saying, hey, this is why and how this information is applicable. Check it out within the context of this theme. So um, now that we're done with that, we're now working on the matter lesson plan, which is already uh, outlined, 90% of it is outlined. We're gonna finish the last 10% on that, and then we'll jump into all the image research, and with a little bit of luck, we'll get that lesson plan done behind the scenes uh, this week, and then we'll get that up on the website next week. And uh, last but not least, we welcomed Randy Gottlieb to our education consulting team. Uh, Randy is the author of the book Teaching Unity, and um, you can learn more about her on our website or just Google her book. The book is exactly what it says, a host, an amazing wealth of information and team building exercises that support diversity and, um, and, and teaching unity. And so um, we're very excited to have uh, Randy on the team and to be able to use the information in her book and the wealth of knowledge that she has to make our open source and uh, free shared education program even better. Highest good food is food that is more nutritionally diverse. It's food that supports uh, continued biodiversity. It's food that's healthier, locally grown, that's duplicable, and that is really um, more more enjoyable, I would say, and definitely more diverse than anything that you can get in the grocery store right now. And we really want to transform the face of the way that people look at food and what people 
can grow and access for themselves, for people that, that want to be able to grow their own food and then to be able to provide that to grocery stores, to restaurants, to provide it as a possible income stream for people that want to do that. And so we're developing all of this. And it also includes all the details of a food forest and um, animal husbandry and all these other details as well. So along that line, this last week, we completed the food forest page, which is hundreds of plants that we researched, uh, complete with details on cultural considerations, complete with uh, details on planting guidelines, complete with uh, descriptions and more links to more information, pictures, all of that stuff is done. And um, we finished it. We finished that page in this last week. And interestingly enough, at the end of that page, our botanist said, you know what, I think I'd add, I could add 50 more plants to this page. So um, not only have we finished all those, those and we've finished researching all the places where you can buy all these plants, because some of them are exotic plants from around the world, and we've researched over 80 different organizations that provide these exotic plants, um, we've also realized that, well, you know, we're going to add 50 more. And so um, it's a huge addition to all of our indoor growing infrastructure. So there's 300 plus plants, there's going to be over 350 plants for the outdoor growing infrastructure. We've also researched over 300 plants for the indoor growing infrastructure. Oh, plus there's the tropical atrium as well, which has another 50, 60 plants that were researched specifically for that. So you can see all that on the website. Um, and in, on that note, so in this last week, you know, the, the housing structures and house all of this in six different environments to grow all these different plants. Uh, we are now finished, we've finished adding in all the rafts in the deep water culture for the aquapinis, which is aquaponics combined with a wallapini. And um, we've added in some media bed details in there. And we've tested out three different waterfall options in 3D as well. Just starting to put in those final visual details and, um, and really complete this, and then we'll duplicate that and show the whole food infrastructure to you. And so teaching people how they can build infrastructure to feed hundreds of people. And so along that lines, you know, we've also finished, uh, we're now doing the engineering on the roof. The initial roof engineering is done thanks to the help of Zdenek Zurich, uh, helped us with that. And uh, this is what that looks like. We've got some more additions that we need to make, and we're still talking about, okay, how can we make this more affordable? Let's talk about resources. Let's talk about light penetration into this building. And so it's a collaborative process, um, but it's coming along. And we've also redesigned the Highest Good Food Portal, which is huge. It's about 60% done. Here's pictures of it. It's not on the website yet. So if you go to the Highest Good Food page right now, it won't look like this. This is our staging page behind the scenes. Um, but this is what our Highest Good Food page is going to look like. And we're building out all the pages that you see, all of these icons here and all these images linked to complete detail pages. And this is the infrastructure for indefinite expansion of all these details. So that we can work with the global collaboration, so we can work with the global cooperative and create better. So and last but not least, along with that, and definitely in relation to uh, food and, and a global collaborative and a global cooperative, in leading that movement is, uh, well, here. Here's the picture that Guy Fraser sent to me. And he says, this is the moment when your brain does a complete rethink on the approach to this project. And that specifically is talking about the food application designs that we're working on right now, which will become like the a combination of Google and Wikipedia for food, where people can add in uh, everything from recipes to uh, maintenance and care details and nutritional details and additional uses details and then access all the planting guidelines, all the details that are all currently on our website in a format that goes way beyond what we'll be doing to encompass literally the entire plant world in a uh, globally editable and, and uh, enhanceable version where people can start adding into this information. We can create this central resource hub that people can go to like a Wikipedia but going very very deep just into the plant world and um, yeah, it's an immense project, and so now we're going to make it look a little bit more like um, like a pearl trees is kind of the direction that we're going right now. And so, just um, where you have a central, if you search for something, that then brings up that central concept, what it was that you were looking for, and then it links to all the other information that you can get about that. And wherever there's empty spaces, people would be able to input their information and to enrich that content to make it more comprehensive, more diverse. So. 
lot accomplished in food infrastructure in this last week. And related to that, one last thing um, related to food infrastructure, and maybe this is a tie-in to highest good housing, is we've, we're 75% done adding in the metric system measurements to all of our pages. And so this is, um, you know, to really make sure that we're, everybody can access our information, understand our information the way that works best for them. And so um, this is what that looks like. And you'll see that what you can do is you can just mouse over the different places there. You can mouse over the different um, links, and what it'll do is it'll give you the conversion of that of you know feet and inches to to the metric system. And if you click on that link, it'll take you to a conversion tool in case we miss anything. So we're excited to have that done too. And highest good housing, the Earthbag Village is meant to be maximally affordable, sustainable housing. Maximally affordable and duplicable sustainable housing build with Earthbag construction complete village model. Uh, in this last week, we spent a lot of time, the team, the core team spent a ton of time working, doing extensive research on rocket mass heaters and discussing um, heating and alternatives because it looks like rocket mass heaters just aren't, they're really not the affordable um, option that we thought they would be for mat, for large, for a whole village model. It's just it's not realistic and heating these small spaces is going to be a lot easier and more effectively done um, we think with small heaters and so we're going to use rocket mass heaters within the uh, in the food infrastructure so how we're exploring those right now so but we're just we're not convinced that that's the way to go for the earth domes. we want to demonstrate it we want to open source rocket rocket mass heater technology but to build 70 of these or 65 of these in all of our different housing infrastructure and then have people making fires it's just, it's just not ideal for the way that these homes are going to be. So we'll demonstrate how people can do that, but it looks like we're going to go with different technology on that. Um, and also in, in housing, um, the central piece of the, of the, the Earthbag Village is the Tropical Atrium, which produces uh, some amazing tropical foods and just an amazing recreational environment. Everything that we do is really multi-use and multi-purpose structures. And so uh, within that, we have now Devin Porter has finished the shaping of the hands and so we're now just working on the positioning of the hands. The last few details on the hands feature for the tropical atrium are really coming together and this is what that looks like and what you can see here is each one of those fingers is going to be a growing platform. It creates a terraced area there so that we can grow food on those terraces and a 30 degree slope in the entire south end of the tropical atrium and so we're super excited to have that complete and so we're almost complete. The Duplicool City Center is dining, laundry, and recreation space for 300 people. And it is purposed to, exactly as it sounds, to provide a central point, a city center, that then people would be able to build any of the seven sustainable village models that we will build and demonstrate and open source and free share plans for around. And so the Sego Center is uh, progressing in 3D in this last week. We have completed uh, the bathroom touch-ups, added outlets into all the bathrooms and then doors to the living dome. And so the next step, and we're really wrapping this up, is going to be to add social dome bathrooms and the library into the social dome and do some final touch-ups on that. Also, Carl Harris is finishing up the final first floor details in CAD and now starting to work on the second floor, which also we hope to finish up this week. And uh, Rob Jurdy is working on the details of the pool uh, transition point. So we're open source sharing uh, natural pool design and um, we want to teach people how to build a pool that operates without the use of any chemicals and have fish and everything in there that is still safe and uh, sustainable and so we're excited to be really coming pretty close on that as well and so um, we should be able to we'll have some good details on that hopefully some more updates on that next week and so with that that completes our update for the week of January 6, 2014. As always, if what we're doing is exciting to you, if what we're doing is something you'd like to be a part of, join our team. There's lots of different options for helping so that anybody can get involved in the way that works for you from internet participation to joining our team as a consultant, as a partner, partner to joining our team as a satellite member or as a pioneer member, the people that will move to the property and build everything that we described. And so take a look at that. And of course, uh, you're also... Uh, invited to join us on our social media networks. We are on pretty much all of them and uh, you can check out what it is that we're doing through those. Subscribe to this channel and um, by all means uh, thank you 
for following our project. Thank you for the support that we get. And um, if you want more information on everything that I talked about and easy uh, details on everything from this last week, go to our blog and check that out. Go to our blog, check that out, and you'll see uh, that you can link to all this information, all the open source content, everything that's being developed, and you can see all the details that I had URLs in this video for as well, and a whole lot more. And so with that, um, thanks for following our progress, and until next week.